All right, it's time to get all these parts put back in order and put back on my engine. It's all the same. Good old dad's car deserves it. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be putting together an engine. I've done a similar build engine like this. If you want to check it out in this card here, building a 500 horsepower engine, that's basically what we're doing here again. We are replicating that. If you guys haven't checked out Project Hot Wheels, we actually took a completely bone stock motor, went 1090s on a full weight GT with a very, very similar engine build as this one. And you can already see, I've already got an engine already laid out. E7TE block, that's a roller block from a Fox body. For the most part, we're at like ground zero. We've already had the deck flattened to zero. We've already honed it. Got a ring in here. I checked the gap of it. It's like 26 that we're gonna go ahead and go with that. If you come over here, you see all the parts. I got the stock piston, which is the TRW. These are actually forged rods and pistons from the factory. Your factory pistons are. I had the, uh, the crankshaft polished, ready for new bearings. And I got a bunch of new parts here. So yeah, we're gonna be doing a budget. We're gonna be doing new rings. We're gonna be doing a complete engine rebuild on a budget, stock bottom end, whatever. And we're gonna put it back down in dad's car, NA. But with this video today, I'm not gonna go over how to build an engine. We're gonna take multiple videos. I'm gonna go kind of on a time lapse. Maybe I'll speak very briefly on what I'm doing. We are gonna flip the pistons in this block. If you haven't watched that video I was telling you about earlier, Again, let's get started real quick. Uh, go run down. We're running with some GT40P heads, stock crank. Each piston will be flipped in the bore. New rod bearings, new main bearings, new cam bearings that are already in the engine. Block is surfaced. Heads are surfaced. Head studs, new head gaskets, timing chain, oil pump, etc., etc. I'm going to go through this stuff again really quick. We're going to talk really briefly when I start the camera. So the first thing I'm going to be end up doing right now, and I've already checked the plastic gauge on the crankshaft, is we are going to be putting the factory crankshaft that we have polished. We're gonna wipe it down, we're gonna wipe the surfaces and we're gonna get it in the, in the engine. Uh, it's already got its end plate checked and the plastic gauge come in at about 2.4 thousandths, which is about where I want my oil clearance to be. Let's get started. crank all nice and tight in here uh torqued down i usually torqued about 85 i think that's the factory specs all my arrows are facing you know these are all numbered one two three four and then the, obviously the rear is its own specific but we had already checked the end play on this stuff and the plastic gauge so we're ready for the install so now i'm going to go ahead i got the cam bearings already in but we're not going to put the cam in or the timing chain on we're going to go start going into the pistons and this is where it's going to get a little tricky you're going to see me putting the pistons in backwards so one goes to five, five goes to one. All the arrows will be pointing backwards. So they're just going across, you know, across the engine. And that's where they're going. And the reason why we're doing that, and I'll show you here on camera, if you noticed, if you could see, there's a little off center there. See how that pin's off centered? It's about 60 thousandths this way. I'm gonna use this factory stroke or the factory offset against it. So and the way it was explained to me is Ford from the factory put offset into the piston because of the cold wear. So basically on cold start, it would make it so the piston didn't slap because there's like about five thousandths piston the wall clearance, four and a half thousandths piston the wall clearance. Since I don't normally drive any of my Fox bodies in the weather at all in cold, I'm not worried about that. So I'm going to take that 60 thousandths offset. I'm going to turn the rod around and I'm going to go, not the rod itself, but I'm going to flip the piston, go the other way, and make it 60 thousandths up, which actually puts the piston higher up in the hole and gives it a little bit of a stroke. Does that make any sense? It's an old dirt track OEM trick. It worked really well on Project Hot Wheels. It's worked on probably another five of the other engines that I've built just like this. So good for a little, you know, a handful of horsepower over what would be 
a normal factory piston setup. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna go get my piston stuff set up. We're gonna put you back on the time lapse. We're gonna start flipping pistons. I'm not gonna go in super detail about it. Um, if you wanna check out that other video, I went into some pretty good detail. I'm gonna, you're gonna see me getting some rings on the pistons and getting them in the bore and getting them lined up or whatever. I also use two pieces of rubber, the, the journal itself. So when I'm tapping the piston in with my sleeve, it doesn't score up my journal. So we'll get these all cleaned up. We'll get these clearance in. Um, these are at 85, 90. Uh, all my rods will be at about 25 to 30. Then we'll put the cam and the timing chain cover on and we'll start working it up oil. Well. Well, we got the uh, the first piston in and got it torqued down. We got it flipped. This is number five and number one cylinder like I had told you I was gonna do. But I torqued my rods to about 28, 29. And you can see legitimately and i've did this in my other video you can see how literally that thing's sitting right at zero <laughs> if not a couple thou out of the hole it's pretty much I, you know what i if i had to guess i would say it's right at zero but that's perfect that's awesome that brings the compression up a little bit you know normally you would have these pins sitting to the front but i'm gonna have them pointing to the back and like i said this is you know this is number five piston in number one hole you know the theory works I've done it in many other videos, so I'm gonna do the same thing with the pistons. I'm gonna put it on the time lapse. All right, so I got all eight pistons in. Got top dead center right off the bat without even trying. Number one's up, number six is up. So my pointer will probably be right here. I'll have to mark this as the one that I want to use. Where we're at next, uh, we're going to be doing the oil pan or the oil pump, the pickup, the gasket, do the camshaft, chain, timing chain cover. It's a it's a pretty, it's a devil's in the details when you're putting this together. I mean, the torque's got to be right. You know, the piston's got to be facing one way or the other, depending on what you do with it. But you know, there's not, it's not rocket science, guys. With with budget building, you could budget build your, your own short block for limited money if you had, you know, the correct tools that you can get. Most of these at Harbor Freight, for that matter. You see me using the gun. I draw the gun up with the, 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 the rod bolts. Then I torque them at 30, 28, 29. I think that's factory spec. I usually pretty lucky at 30. No big deal. When we come back, we're going to be doing the rest of the motor. For this camshaft, we have decided to go with the Cobra camshaft which you can see the GT stamp right here. This is a factory camshaft F3ZE one. So, I mean, legitimately we're building a stock bottom end with the Cobra cam. We're basically replicating the Cobra motor right now. We already have the GT40 intake. So have the best of the budget. That's the best way to say this. This is like the best of the budget. Former link uh, timing chain. Uh, we'll get it put in. We'll get it. We're gonna load this in conventional style, which is basically dot to dot. If you don't know what that means, it's this dot here, and we yet. And this dot here. It's all the same.
so we're moving right along right here the oil pump in m68 performance you know we got the oil pump shaft nice and seated and the rings at the top so it doesn't come out this was already cleaned by cousin fred and cousin paul this was the one that came out of this block with this crank and, and these pistons we're at the point now to where we're going to put the timing chain cover on we got the little dial pins these are very important for alignment we're going to clean up the gasket surfaces real quick one more time come out pretty good you know we did a lot of the painting and cleaning early so we should be able to gasket seal this put it on and then work our way to the oil pan we'll put it on and the bottom half of this motor is pretty much done at this point. I can flip it over and start working on the cylinder heads and the head studs. I've updated I know I've had you on a lot of time lapses or whatever but you know this is about building this engine you know pretty much in one episode we just put the oil pan on and we reuse an old blue gasket this is a, those performance for uh Ford racing gaskets definitely definitely want to invest in one of those because those are reusable we always put you know a nice amount of right stuff in the corner so it doesn't get uh leaky or whatever but I'm gonna put the motor mounts on right here we've locked the um the harmonic balancer down which is the trick flow balancer i like these all steel balancers because harmonics will kill your motor especially in higher horsepower or whatever the timing chain cover on we're pretty much at the point now we're gonna flip the motor over i'm gonna put you on another time lapse and then i'm gonna start getting the arp head studs put in now one thing about these gaskets is they have a front they have a tag that says front on them and they only go one way that means one's going to be upside down and one's going to be right side up and we got our head bolts or head studs i mean these are killer for any sort of boosted these are a must for boost boosted you get up past 10 pounds this will keep your block straight if you got a flat surface like this one has and if you got a flat surface like those cylinder heads have then ain't no reason why you can't run 15 pounds of boost like i did on project hot wheels did that have a problem nope matter of fact i just talked to uh, sean the other day and he's still beating a snot out of that car. Anyways, let's get back on the time lapse. I'm gonna flip it over and get the gaskets uh, areas clear. And we're gonna get the head ga heads on uh, tonight. Get them torqued down. We got all the head studs in and got the surfaces pretty clean as you can see right here but you got to make sure you put thread sealant here these are all in a water jacket these all need to be uh, arp molly lubed because they stretch and they yield a little bit um i only put them in hand tight They're supposed to yield a little bit and, and 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 stretch a little bit when you torque them down so let me get these cleaned off let me get this head gasket on and we were going to figure out which head we're going to put on and i'm at least going to get these on and torque tonight and then i'm going to call it tonight
crank down on this engine. Man, this, this motor is going to be epic. And it's budget, it's factory production, parts, intake, pretty much everything that we're doing here is just going to make this engine run really, really good over just like a normal stock bottom end block. I'm really kind of interested to see if the Cobra cam is going to work with the speed density, considering it's kind of like a stockish style cam. If it doesn't, then we're going to go ahead and uh, convert back over to mass air like we had with Dad's car before. This is a badass motor. I can't wait to get this thing off the stand and fire it up. All right, guys, I got the intake on. I know it went a little bit faster. Guys, there's really no reason for me to go any further. We got Dad's car waiting over here. We're going to go ahead and get this engine. It's all buttoned up. We got to put the water pump on. We got to put the pulleys on. I'm going to probably put the alternator on real quick. Throw my golf ball in the distributor hole. That way nothing falls in. Um, this is pretty much everything's done and ready to go. Even the vacuums are hooked up. So you guys enjoy my video. It's been long. It's got a lot of time lapses in it. I pretty much started from zero and built the engine. So we'll see how good it is when we get it in dad's car. Budget minded. Drop in uh, sealed power plasma molly rings. You know, standard bearings. Machine work polishing the crank and the cam and and getting the cam bearings installed and decking the surfaces you know it's just you know you can make these motors run really good like they're brand new again if you just do some of the maintenance things i mean i got probably anywhere between you know 750 and a thousand dollars total in it and that includes you know machine work i already had the gt40 intake that's an explorer junkyard mod and i already had the p heads but that's also an explorer junkyard mod you can get them cut washed and for 150 bucks you can get a pair of uh springs and this is actually a uh, explorer throttle body that i actually modified i do have a 65 millimeter one that i machined but i just left that one on there because i don't feel like doing it budget minded under a thousand dollars this motor will make 500 wheel easy on some turbo boost um we're gonna keep it na for the rest of the year for now anyways if you guys enjoy my video make sure you hit that like and subscribe on the way out hit the bell for notifications so you get notified when i upload videos i do have a join membership club membership if you're interested in giving something back to the channel and being part of a membership with some perks uh outside of that guys i appreciate the watch time and as always i'll see you soon